there's a lot of artists that come to me and they're like, yo, man, you know, I'm looking for a producer. That's all I need. That's all I need. I feel like when I talk to producers, a lot of the producers always feel like, nah, I'm not about to work with an artist for free or anything like that. They're just trying to scam me. They're, they're, they, they seem very scorned. What does it look like right, for a producer to truly invest in a relationship with an artist where you're building sound around the artist? It's not just pulling uh, YouTube beats or anything like that. What does it take for a producer to go that extra step? Well, I think uh, the interesting thing you just said right there is like artists come to you and say, Man, all I need is a producer and, and you know, I, I just need somebody to just build my sound with me and it would just take my career to the next level. And then on the flip side, you look at how producers are treated within the industry and how small of a pie we get, uh, you know, on the, on the grand scheme of things. And as far as like the financial payout, um, I think it's it's interesting because, you know, to touch on your question, what it looks like is having passion in someone else's sound and then also seeing where you can fit into their sound and where it can go and just having that vision creatively on where you want it to go. Um, and I built that passion, you know, working with Kevin Powers and starting when I was 16, 17 years old as a, as a high school hobby of producing. It's like, oh, we just did it for fun, right? But in, my back, in the back of my mind, I was like, I, I know I want to do music and I know I want to be on the producer side of things. When I first started making music, I got on the mic and tried some things out, didn't work. And I, uh, you know, I realized quickly, had some family members tell me that, hey, let's just stick with the beats. The beats sound good. <laughs> Not your bag. You on the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they let me know about my bag. I, I agree with them. So, yeah, just starting with Kevin and, you know, seeing and just building off with each other and, and bouncing off of each other. And, you know, it even led to me getting into songwriting and, and working with him in that regard as well. But that's really what it looks like is having passion and then also having a proper vision because I've definitely had passion about some artist music but i didn't really see myself fitting and that led to the fizzle of the creative connection right uh and and i think i still think the most important connection to have with an artist as a producer is that personal connection like i should be able to kick it with that artist and hang out with them uh you know even if we weren't making music you know that there's got to be that connection there because it's going to lead to a better final product you know within the studio or you know if you have to work over the phone over email which I prefer to be in person and in, in the studio. That's where, where I think I excel, but yeah. Yeah, so so you said something, man, that stuck, right? You said passion and vision and just the, the conversations I have with artists, I feel like 150% of them would say they got that, you know? So I feel like it has to be a deeper qualification process from there. So let me ask you this question, right? When you're looking at, looking, um, at artists that you're working with, because I'm sure that there are some that you don't expect it to go past, maybe like a song or two. And then I'm sure there are situations where you're like, hey, I would like to build a long-term situation, maybe lock in more. Are you looking at potential for success when making that decision? Are you looking at music quality when you're making that decision? Or are you genuinely looking at like how much of a personal connection we seem to have? Like which one trumps, or which one is the most important to you when trying to make that decision? I think I can say that I break it up into two categories. So I have the subconscious motivation and then I have my conscious motivation. So to touch on my conscious motivation, it would be respect. So speaking on where I'm at right now um, and the records that I have out, the amount of streams, whatever, all the accolades, I have to bring that into you know consideration whenever I'm deciding on what percentage I want of a song or how much money I want up front for a song, right? So there's got to be respect if a new artist is coming to me and wanting to work and I see it the same way if I'm going to a new artist and want to work with them I need to respect that you know they have their sound and you know I, I need to fit into where you know what they have going on so I'd say respect uh, and then consciously I'm also looking for you know the business side of things are good so if that if those conversations are easy to have with their manager or them personally uh, I'm definitely looking at that um, and then I'd say the, the two prior that I mentioned earlier in the, in the last question is also, are also conscious uh, motivations. I'd say my, subco my subconscious motivation is success, right? Like, can I see them being the biggest artist in the world? That plays a part, but I think there's other, you know, connects outside of the producer that can affect that. And that, you know, I, I'd, I'd like to consider myself creative 
you know, operating creative direction for some artists too, is, you know, like kind of touching on the marketing, connecting somebody or an artist with, you know, with contraband or like making plays like that, uh, I think is important for me when I'm working with an artist as well. But I think the the level of success and how big they can be is definitely subconscious. I'm not like sitting here like, oh, who's going to be the next TikTok star? Because that just for, for me is very hollow and it removes the passion out of it. So I'm like, that, it's just not in it for me. But yeah. How much? It is it is a little more nuanced, I will say, that to, yeah, to no, touch you know, on that first question. Artists, managers, there is no way you should ever do a regular pre-save campaign again because Forever Fan has Forever Saves, where a fan could pre-save your music one time and then automatically pre-save every song you ever release after that. That's right, forever. And on top of that, Forever Fan has email and texting all in one platform. This is built out for artists who don't have huge teams and don't wanna get overwhelmed doing too many things in too many different places. So go to foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels, that's no labels with an S, and put in the code no labels 2 to get access and try it out for only a dollar. Foreverfan is your go-to place for your marketing needs as an artist so you can stay organized, have your own infrastructure to make it a lot easier to go to the next level. Again, that's foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels and type in the code no labels 2 at checkout to get access for only a dollar. Now back to the episode. Now you basically alluded to the fact that producers don't get a lot of respect when it comes to the front end of the music, right? How much would you associate the success of a song with the production versus just the artist? Because a lot of artists I've seen this year, I hadn't really seen this as much, but I've seen more uh, clips go viral of artists basically feeling like my producers are getting too much. Like we're responsible for all this. Producers don't even need percentages. This might have to be the most time I spend on the question. <laughs> uh, don't, you don't got to go to a PC on this, man. Come on. Nah, yeah. So I, I, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, let's just touch on relevancy and what's going on right now. So we'll, we'll just talk about Not Like Us. And I think there's a reason that Not Like Us was put out during this time, uh, during this beef. You know, there's a reason that it came at the time that it did, right? And then there's a reason that it had this bounce and that he linked with Mustard and that they brought such a strong commercial hip hop radio sounding beat into the equation because it's like, hey, Drake, I can beat you on this accord, too. Like I can have people dancing to my music, too, and be beefing and saying some crazy stuff, you know, at the same time. Right. So playing off that, I think that the producer is the original songwriter in most cases. Uh, you know, in pop, you deal with a lot of artists that are writing songs without the beat. Um, and I think in hip hop, it's a it's a totally different scene, right? Now, I walk into sessions and I have loops or I have beats that are ready to go, and the song isn't even written until they hear that beat, right? They could they they could write the song from the melody that I did with the piano, right? Like they could match the melody I did with the piano to make the entire hook. So I think in that regard, in the hip hop space where you, the producer is the original songwriter, I think that it's insane, uh, you know, to, that we are getting the smallest piece of the pie. And I get it, there's marketing that comes into play. There's, you know, having budget to go on, on tours and there's all these moving parts within, uh, you know, an artist's career. But I think that comes down to is how involved are you with that career, right? Like if I have a long lasting connection and I'm building with an artist, I would expect more of the pie. Cause I feel like I have, I have, more of I have more weight and more buy-in to their career rather than a a producer that just kind of got a one-off placement wasn't in the session didn't record the session you know they just sent a beat to an a and r and a and r got it placed you know i think what you put in is what you should get out uh i think that's my stance on that but speaking from my experience and how involved i'm usually with you know how involved i am with the artist and with the song itself i'm usually recording the session or I'm in the session writing lyrics as well. Uh, I think if you're doing that, I mean, you're, you're playing a lot of different roles. You're playing the songwriting role, you're playing the product, the producer role. And then we can even get to, you know, like a Metro Boomin status, a Sunny Digital, uh, uh, you know, uh, 808 Mafia, right? Like Wheezy, all these huge producers, their name is marketing in itself, right? So they should, they should have some leverage to be like, hey, I, you know, I need 5% 
of the master and I need $20,000. Like when you get into that, you know, realm and where your name carries that much weight, you know, I think it's a no brainer. I mean, you're, you're marketing in itself. Yeah, I think it's a lot easier when you're talking about the superstar producers who have a lot of brand name. But even then, artists arguing that producers don't need to get a percentage to me needs some merit, right? Like, how are you arguing that producers don't need to get a percentage when all the tracks that are taken off, they have the best beat. People are moving to the beat. Like, until you start having tracks that are number one on Billboard that are acapella, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what, are you, what are we talking about? All right, and we know today more than anything, we get we got mood playlists. The, the beats inform everything else. Like that, that is the canvas that makes something work or doesn't. And then it's weird when you are constantly talking down on the industry for diluting your creative value, yet you want to do that to the, another creative. You know what I'm saying? Like to me, it's, it's, it's double sided, and it's weird that artists are trying to have that. But I get it. You know, you got to work within that space. So you have your answers and how to work with it. I I, go, I, I find it a, a, a lot crazier, and I and I just speak from the marketer outside of the camp and and watching the relationship that I continue to see evolve. And not that every artist is that way, but it's definitely been more and more artists I've seen that have been vocal about feeling like nah, producers shouldn't get that. Uh, producers all should damn near be work for hire, um, you know, and so on. And, so and, on. and I, just to summarize that that last question too is like to combat that right like we there's a there's a preconceived notion in the industry right like producers are just going to get the smallest part of the, of the pie and like you just said until songs are popping off acapella on the radio that that shouldn't be the case and you know to touch on mood right like that dun, 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 that guitar boom i'm like oh i'm like i know where i'm at i don't even have to hear the lyrics i like you could just turn the lyrics off lyrics are great it's a great written song but just that guitar is like oh and then with fused with the hip-hop drums it's like it's a hit, right? Um, but to combat that, you know, if you're a C to, let's say D to B tier producer, right? You don't have that huge name where they're going to pay you, you know, just for the marketing side of things. You have to maximize your impact on the song, right? You have to be an engineer in some regard. You have to provide mixed notes. Like focus on maximizing your impact on the song to maximize your income. Um, and to touch on the percentage things, it's like percentage is such a broad term, right? Because you have publishing and you have the master sound recording, you know, percentages and percentage is so important on the producer side of things because it's ownership, right? Like I'd love to get a check for $15,000, but if that song does 1 billion plays and I took that bigger advance and I didn't get anything on the master, I'm going to be sick, right? It's just that long term. Um, and, and that's where understanding your finances and, and running your career like a business comes into play. Uh, is, you know, you need to get that percentage. That's ownership. That gives you leverage when you're going to sign a, a publishing deal or, or you're, maybe you're signing a label deal, right? Uh, so, yeah, percentage is, is super important in the equation. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play in courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.